Good day friends, I'm Joshua Henry. I'm a third year chemical engineering student at Stellenbosch University doing vacation training at Optimum Solutions. Today, this presentation will be on grey box modelling for nonlinear systems. I have two goals for today. Firstly, to show you how grey box modelling works. And secondly, to help you see how you could use one platform, namely MathWorks, to achieve the following objectives of which predicting sensor failure, predictive maintenance and controller design are key points for today. To achieve these goals, I will, brief, I will explain what plant modelling is about. I will briefly explain the approach to systems modelling, then I will do a demonstration on how grey box modelling is used. How this could be equivalently achieved in Simulink, then, after we understand the dynamics and parameters of our plant, we will look at predicting sensor failure, maintenance and predictive control. Why is plant modelling important? Physical plant experiments are expensive and time consuming, even impossible without understanding the design problem by accurate models. Generally, theory will be used to build model structures and arrange of small experiments will be used to estimate the model parameters. This eases optimization. A plant can be an anti-lock braking system, an electrical grid. Our example for today, the continuously stirred tank reactor, CSTR. Our plant is on the right, the system is on the left, showing a standard controller. If we can achieve our goals being system identification and optimization, we can significantly improve the system by adding an adaptive model predictive controller. The CSTR is non adiabatic. There are three input variables and two output variables. The flow rate is constant, the inlet concentration is also constant. What is system identification? With system identification, you can identify the models possibly appropriate to your plant. You can create linear and nonlinear dynamic systems models. MATLAB and Simulink can possibly offer you new ways of accessing data, exploring and discovering your plans, and then effectively exporting your plans in the form of reports on hardware and in other programming languages. There is a vast spectrum of system modeling approaches, mathematical modeling on the one end and empirical modeling called black box modeling on the other. Below you can see a plant of an electrical circuit with the equation. For mathematical modeling we have the equation and we have the parameters. For gray box models we, there are some un unknown parameters. And with black box models, we only have the data. Mathematical models are carefully derived based on a fundamental understanding of the system. Hence, the equations and the parameters are known, but without proper assumptions, they are rarely applicable in the real world. Black box modeling, as the name implies, has no reason within, but we would like to impose reason on it and therefore would like to find a model of its behavior based on its outputs for, a given, for given inputs. Our main focus will be on gray box models. As the name implies, we know what the design equations are, but we do not know how accurate our initial parameters are. The advantage of this approach is that you can connect your understanding of the nature of the plant to your model. So we measure our input and output signals on a physical plant. Then we select a model structure and evaluate the model. Then we estimate the parameters and evaluate the estimated model. For this perfect CSR, we derive from mole balance the first equation. From reaction kinetics, the first order irreversible reaction is shown by the Arrhenius equation and is known to be exothermic. An energy balance yields the last equation. We are aiming to control the internal temperature by varying the jack coolant temperature. In this example, we have eight parameters, four of which are known to be temperature dependent. The reaction rate constant, the activation energy, the overall heat transfer coefficient, 
and the heat capacity. System objects are designed specifically for implementing and simulating dynamic systems with inputs that change over time. Many signal processing, communications and control systems are dynamic. In a dynamic system, the values of the output signals depend on both the instantaneous values of the input signals and on the past behavior of the system. So how does parameter estimation work? How are we going to adjust our temperature-dependent parameters dynamically? We have measured inputs and outputs. We slice our data set into an estimation subset and a validation subset. We use the estimation subset and model to find accurate parameters. Then we validate them. I'm now going to briefly do parameter estimation in MATLAB. This is our CSTR model open in MATLAB. Firstly, we have to create our grey box object. Then we specify the input states and outputs of our CSTR model using set and set init. We also specify that the initial states should be estimated by, by default. Then we define our parameters and we specify which ones we are not going to change or estimate. It is important to set rough boundaries or realistic boundaries for your parameters. In this example we know that all but the heat of reaction parameter is positive. Plotting our or creating our um, data objects, we have our estimation subset and our validation subset. Plotting our um, input variables, we can see them in these plots. And then our output variables, we have the concentration and the reaction reactor temperature. Here you can see at 10 hours signs of, uh, of ignition as the reaction starts to proceed forward rapidly. The because it is exothermic the temperature rises more than 80 degrees. Then we can compare our initial CSTR model with, valid with estimation data. We can see that it compares reasonably well, but with our validation data it starts to deviate after 15 hours. So to do the parameter estimation we use the nonlinear gray estimation function. Comparing our estimation subset and our model we can see that it fits very well and the validation subset also con um, corresponds to our model. The model corresponds to our data. In the slides you can now see the initial CSTR model compared to the validation subset more clearly. Our updated model compared to the validation subset and you can see that it corresponds very well. Back to our agenda, it is now time to look at using grey box modelling approaches in Simulink. Firstly, design equations can easily be drawn into Simulink. Simulink has the advantage of being able to process nonlinear models directly, compared to using an iterative approach using MATLAB objects. New data sets can also be entered with greater ease. This approach eases plant scalability this increasing workspace usability and parameter estimation is done using the optimization toolbox. The equations are written in state form so that it can easily be entered into Simulink. Now I'm going to do um, parameterization in Simulink. I'm now in our Simulink model. You can now see how our design equations are easily entered into block format, the top being the mole balance and the bottom section the um, energy balance of our CSTR. To do the parameter estimation we just go to parameter to analysis and then parameter estimation. This opens up the parameter estimation toolbox. 
we can create a new experiment, which I've done. Open this experiment. We have to specify our input, our outputs. Um, I've specified x1 and x2 as our outputs. And then we have to specify our output data sets, which is output s1 and output s2. Those go in, in those boxes. Then we specify our initial states and then our parameters. Now we can plot our model response. This showing the rate that simulates the, our initial simulated um, model and the blue our data. Then we can estimate the parameters. Let's view this at 10 times speed in PowerPoint. Here you can see how your parameters change over each iteration and you can slowly see your CSDR plant data converging onto our estimation subset data. Now we are ready to use this for predictive maintenance and adaptive control. We are able to classify what part of the signal is noise or disturbances. Our updated model can be used to predict what normal behavior is. Viewing the big picture, stored data can be used for machine learning to predict scheduled maintenance and failure. Using stored data is not enough. For precise predictions, the status of the system needs to be updated dynamically. The updated model can then be used to make accurate maintenance predictions. Adaptive control can also be made possible. Compare this block diagram with the first CSTR system in Simulink. We can update the mod model parameters online, and this is shown in the new section on the right where our model is linearized and updated and then fed into the controller. Now with the updated model, the controller can make more refined inputs into the CSTR. The results seen in these two plots, the left hand side showing the refined control output and the right hand side what happens if on the normal MBC controller without an adaptive part. In conclusion, this presentation shows you how important parameter estimation is. I therefore call you to action. These links give some extra plant modeling background. Added to this, we offer consulting, training, and the much needed tools of MATLAB and Simulink. So visit our webpage and contact us to transform your workspace.